Thank you very much. Uh, all the dignitaries in the dais and respected professors, faculties, and the students of this Mahabidale. I'm sorry, uh, I can't speak in Hindi. I can understand Hindi very well, but I can't speak in Hindi. Very sorry for that. Uh, I will speak uh, in English. Uh, very little time left. It's already 12 now. We have to close the program at 12 o'clock. I will try to complete in two minutes. It is proof that there is a historical, not only historical relation, we have the, you know, blood relation between India and Nepal. We don't have to reprove it again and again. <laughs> if there is no Nepal, there will not be an India also. Because Shiva, as Professor Sir already mentioned, the Kailas Nath Parvat belongs to Nepal, that has been gifted to Tibet, now it is in China, belongs to Nepal, is from, you know, Shiva is from Nepal, Shita is from Nepal, Buddha is from Nepal. Therefore, you know, the history will not be complete if we forget Nepal. Therefore, you know, we should have to give the equal footing. Although Nepal is a very small country in comparison to India, the population is very few. Only we have three crores of people. Out of three crores, one crore is in India, one crore abroad, and only one crore in Nepal. And almost one crore in Nens in Nepal. That is all we have. And you have the huge population, huge land, big country. Economy is big, everything is big, Nepal is small. But because of the cultural ties, because we are in the cultural city today, we are in the cultural college, school, this is the historical, cultural country. We didn't have to prove it again, it is already proven. We didn't have to convince the convinced people, we are all convinced. We didn't need to convince each other. Yes, there is the political boundaries. No matter, because I'm not a politician. I don't know the politics. It changes. The religion also seems changes from the political perspective. From historical perspective, from cultural perspective, it will never change. Never change, no matter who comes into power. That's what my understanding is. Therefore, you know, we should have, only thing is, you know, that we should have to maintain it forever. That is the only challenge that we have. Because today, the youth, that is true, the youth movement is go west. They are going to the west. They don't want to stay in our country. We don't have the youth now. They want to go to the west. Similar, same is the case in India. Last time I was in a PC meet program, one statistic that had been presented, the capacity of a university was 1,30,000. And the current students available in that university is only 70,000. Out of the 70,000, and huge number of students are from Nepal. Other people gone then to the West. We should have to stop it. We should have to think from that perspective. When the youth go to the West, they will accept the Western culture. <coughs> they will accept the Western culture. Gradually, they will forget our one culture. They will forget our language. They will forget our <coughs> history. See, ne Nepal and India, same, the multilingual country, Nepal is a multi multilingual country, multi-religious country. This is not only Hindu country, this is also the place of Buddha. Because 29th of years, 
Buddha. He just meditated himself in the quest of the knowledge. But ultimately, he was enlightened in six years, within six years when he started his journey in India. So in the case of my journey, I completed my study in India from Delhi School of Economics. I was in Delhi School of Economics in 1987 to 90 for two and a half years. And I had completed my PhD from Delhi School of Economics. And so many dignities in these ties, they had the education from this country. Because it was well established. The education system was very good. Yes, we always claim that we had never been the colony of British. But one thing we missed, and that is infrastructure. Because we were not the colony of the British, we didn't have the good infrastructure, which India has now. Educational infrastructure, transport infrastructure, everything is now because of your gift. Although they had taken a lot of things, everything they had taken from here for their development, but at least something they had developed over here that we should have admired. Whatever they had left, that is also became the foundation for this country to flourish. You know, if we think positively, everything is possible. We should not confine ourselves in a very narrow part. Because as I, I had said, see, this is a multi-religious country. Every inch of land in India, you will find the Buddhist artifacts. At the 6,000 of the monasteries that have been built by Ashok in this land. Never forget that. Now, how many percent is Buddhist in this, in, in this country? 1%, less than 1%. But it's all gone then. It's all destroyed. We should not destroy our one culture, one tradition, one value. Therefore, we should be, we are the academician. We should be realistic. We should be realistic because we should honor all the religion that is in practice. My university, Lumini Buddhist University, is a specific university for the you know, flourishing the Buddhist philosophy all over the world. Now, from this year, we are we are opening the contemporary philosophy also. The Zainism, we are starting the class on Zainism. We will be starting the class in the Vedic philosophy. Why not? We should have to start the class and all the philosophies. We should have to see what actually inside and all the good things that we have to take from there. And that will be for the benefit of the human being. We should be humanistic. Now look at today's world. What we are doing, we are building the death chamber for ourselves, not only for a person, it is for the whole human being. That chamber, in the name of the superpower, what we are doing, we are we have the power to kill all these human beings. We have the power to abolish all these human beings from this world. That is what is the message given by this superpower countries. We have to teach them the humanitarian value of the human being, the humanitarian value that we have to teach. That will be possible only when we start talking about their religion, their language, their philosophy, their value system. They also might be right. We don't know. If we don't study, we don't know. Therefore, if we can find only in Hindu, our path will be very narrow, very narrow. It should be broadened, no doubt, the Oriental culture. This is the 
foundation. Everybody knows about it. The only thing we have to maintain this. How do we maintain it? By giving the proper knowledge to the world. That will be possible from the dialogue, not from the distance. And my university, Lumini Buddhist University, is ready to have the conference. This program next year, no problem. Yeah, I just welcome everybody <laughs> to come to Nepal have, and have this program in my university. <coughs> yes, we should have to, we should have to be very open so that we can find in our one arena. Come on, let us work together. If there is the enmity, misunderstanding between two countries, let us have the dialogue. We can have the dialogue and we can finish, we can just, you know, solve it with the neighboring country because since, you know, the Buddhist University, we have the very good relation with the Buddhist countries. That includes China also, <coughs> Korea, Japan, you know, Taiwan. If we, if we talk about the Taiwan, the Chinese will just get angry. If we talk about the Tibet, Chinese will just get angry. This is not good. If we talk about India, Chinese will get angry. If we talk about China, India will get angry. No, we should have to stop it. Let us have the dialogue. Why do we fight? See, Nepalese, see, everybody appreciate, oh, you are brave. Yes, Nepalese are brave and we are fighting for others. We have to stop it. Now, if you see the, if you just have gone to the news, the Nepalese are fighting for Russia. So many Nepalese had already killed and they are fighting with the other Nepali from Ukraine. What is this? Now the Nepalese are in the Chinese army. Someday they will fight with the Nepalese in the border issue with India. We just have to stop it. We have to stop it. We are not to fight each other. We should have to honor everybody. Have you seen any animals, any insects fighting each other like we are fighting? Have you seen any animals fighting each other? No. Why do we fight? Why do we have the misunderstanding? This is all, all the, because I am not the politician, I just want to blame to the politics. This is all you are the politics. They have created these boundaries. We should have to abolish these boundaries and we should have to have the humanitarian relationship and respect each other, love each other. That is what the Buddha taught. I didn't see any difference in Buddhist philosophy and the Hindu philosophy. <laughs> I didn't see any difference. Now, Ved, yes, in the, in the Buddhism, there is the Vedna. Yeah, from Vedna, it might be the Ved. We don't know. We have to do the study, we have to do the research. <laughs> now, Bine. The Binay for the Ganesh, we say Binay. Binay is the teaching, one of the teaching of the Buddha, the person who protects that Binay is the Binay. If we just see from this perspective, all the differences will just go. Just go. We will not have any differences. And there will not be any fight between the different religious people because we all are the same. The sons and the daughters of the same parents, not from the different parents. Just with this message, I just want to request everybody to be united 
work for the humanitarian and stop fighting thank you very much